Hi Jay, I'm Belinda, one of the doctors. I've been asked to have a look at your cardiovascular system today. So that involves me having a feel of your pulse, having a bit of a look, feel and a listen to your chest. Would that be all right? Yeah, sure. sure. Fantastic. So initially, as always, I'm taking a look at Jay's general appearance. Does he look well or unwell? Is he short of breath at rest? Are there any adjuncts next to the bed which might give us any clues, such as GTN spray or any oxygen? Moving on, I'm going to start having a little look at his hands. And the first thing I notice when I pick them up is the temperature. He feels nice and warm, so he's got probable good peripheral perfusion. But let's just check by doing his capillary refill. And that's excellent. So that's good. What I'm looking for again is any signs of nicotine staining here. That's good. And just turning the palm over, any palmar erythema, which you could see with things like hyperthyroidism and pregnancy, which can give you um, a higher cardiac output. Moving on to the pulse, having a feel for the rate, for the rhythm, and for the, the character and the volume of the pulse as well. A narrow pulse pressure you're going to see in things like aortic stenosis, whereas a wider pulse pressure you often feel with aortic regurgitation. Just get you to lift up um, your arm up there for me. And again, I'm looking for a collapsing pulse, which you tend to find with aortic regurgitation. I'll get you to relax that down there for me. What I'll get you to do is just to look up at the ceiling. That's lovely. So I'm just having a check there for conjunctival pallor. I'll get you to open your mouth for me. Poke that tongue out, lovely, and touch the roof of your mouth. Yep, that's lovely. Okay, fantastic, and pop that back in. Now, I want to look for Jay's JVP here. So what I want you to do, you need to make sure that his neck muscles are nice and relaxed. I'm going to get you to just to tilt your chin a tiny bit up and a little bit to your left. That's lovely. So not too much, otherwise you'll strain the neck muscles. What I'm looking for here is the characteristic double flicker that you should see with a venous pulsation. Now, if it's difficult to see, there are a number of things you can do. You can use a torch you've got a little pen torch to light and to see a little bit easier. You can occlude here at the base of his neck and you may find that this will make things settle down. You can also pop a finger here and just see that the pulse gets bigger. You can ask Jay to lay down a bit further so we can pop the bed flat and that can make a, a JVP more obvious if it's not distended or if it's already up right at the angle of your jaw we can ask Jay to sit up and that should drop things there okay the other thing with the JVP is that you shouldn't you should be able to collapse it down okay so you shouldn't be able to feel it there once you actually pop your fingers on it okay so the other thing we can do is the hepatojugular reflex so we can see if I push here you should get a transient rise in the JVP and often this Transient rise is persistent with heart failure. That's great, thank you. So moving on now to Jay's chest, as I mentioned before, we're looking for any obvious scarring. We're going to now have a feel for the apex bead. So it's easier in thin subjects, obviously, because what we need to do is count down between the intercostal spaces. So I'm just going to have a gentle feel here of your chest between your ribs. And what we're looking for is at the fifth intercostal space. Good in the mid-clavicular line. So your clavicle obviously goes from the sternal notch to the acromioclavicular joint. In the midline here, we should feel Jay's apex beat. That should be palpable with two fingers. If it's more lateral or displaced, it could indicate left ventricular hypertrophy, which is seen in a number of conditions, such as hypertrophic um, cardiomyopathy, such as aortic stenosis or hypertension where you get an increase in the afterload that the ventricle has to work against. So that's all very normal, which is excellent. Now we're going to feel for a heave. So I'm just going to place the heel of my hand along the left sternal edge there. And again, if the ventricle is hypertrophic or the right ventricle is hypertrophic, you can often feel this as a real heave, I guess, hitting your hand. I'm just going to feel for thrills. So just over the apex area again. And over the, both the left and the right sternal edge. So now we'll move on to auscultating the heart. And you want to listen with both the bell and the diaphragm. 
in a systematic fashion so as to not miss anything. Now it's important with the heart that when you're listening you're able to time the heart sounds so it's good to have your finger on the carotid pulse to be able to tell where you're at in the cardiac cycle. So I'm going to start with the apex beat here. That's good. Move over to the left sternal edge, where you're more likely to be able to hear murmurs associated with things like aortic regurgitation, septal defects, or um, tricuspid regurgitation. Moving to the pulmonary area and the aortic area. And now I'm going to listen with our diaphragm here. And I'll just repeat the same thing again. Good. Okay, Jay, I'd now like to ask you to roll over onto your left side for me, if that's okay. I'll let you roll first, and then I'll pop this here. I'm just having a listen over the apex speed for the murmur of mitral stenosis, which is more clearly heard in this position. And that all sounds good, which is great. If you did hear a murmur in the mitral area, you'd want to have a listen into the axilla for radiation. I'll let you turn back there now. Good. And just relax that arm out for me. That's great. Okay, and there's no murmur there, so there's no radiation. Jay, I'd like you to sit up now if that's okay. Great. And now we're going to listen at the left sternal edge. I'd like you to take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out and then hold. That's great. So murmurs that are more obvious here would be aortic regurgitation in full expiration. And also, you may notice on inspiration a splitting of the second heart sound, which can be physiological and should settle with expiration. Now I'm going to have a listen to your back there as well. The other thing, sorry, to note before we move on to the back is that if you hear a murmur throughout the precordium, um, the other place to listen for radiation is to the carotids. So we might just have a quick listen to the carotids. I want you to take a deep breath in and then hold for me. Good, and exhale. And lovely, same on the other side. Good, and exhale. Now we're going to have a listen at the back. So at the lung bases here, so deep breath in and out through your mouth. Good. And I'm also going to have a feel for any sacral edema, which is going to be where edema tends to settle in a bed-bound patient or a wheelchair-bound patient. So there's none there, which is great. I'll let you lay back again now, Jay. Good. And we're just going to have a look for any peripheral edema here as well. So if the legs look swollen, basically just need to make an indentation. Leave for a couple of seconds, and if you take that away with pitting edema, you'll find that you leave a mark. If you do find some edema, it's important to quantify how far up the leg this goes, and it may extend the entire way. Okay, thanks very much, Jay. I think we're all done.